Snickers bag. Yes, it's that time of year again. It's the top 10 Linux distros, in my opinion, of 2017. So what do you think is going to be number 10? Shall we see what? Let's find out. Number 10. Russia R10. Yes, my comrade. From Russia. Yes. Now, you know I'm not a KDE fan, but it was really nice and easy to use. The installation went a breeze. I couldn't really knock it, really, could I? It was really good. As for a dish I wouldn't normally use, it's fantastic. Bit no looky likey, but yeah, KT. Okay, yeah, I can't knock it. It was lovely to use. That's why it's number 10, guys, number 10. So, what's number 9? Let's have a look. Number 9 is Sabian. Okay, Sabian. Now, I've been playing with Sabian for quite a bit this year, and I had a bit of failures and some real good successes, okay? Some due to my problems, and some to other people's problems, but I've grown to like it, especially the mate version or Mate. It's really nice, yeah. I've just got to get used to it. I'm going to keep it on a hard drive and we're going to keep using it for the next year. That's really super duper. Okay, so we're going down the numbers now. Number eight will be deep in now based on Debian, so I'm told. But the desktop is to die for. I mean, the icons, the bar, it just makes it so user-friendly and easy to use. Very, 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 very similar to Solus in some respects. But don't quote me on that. These are all my personal opinions. If you don't like them, you don't have to take them. No big deal. But I really like that. Deep in at number eight. It's fantastic. Go and give it a go. I think you'll like it. Anyway, number seven... Sousa, yeah, or oh, Suze, whatever you call it, from Germany. Right, this is the Leap version here you see in the video on, on the screen at the moment. But I actually prefer the Tumbleweed version because it comes with so much more stuff at the end of the day and suits my hardware better. Leap just didn't want to do a real install. Well, it took me a while to install it on my main machine and it was just too much of a hard work, really. But Tumbleweed just went bish bosh bish and I was done in 20 minutes. Yeah. Because remember, the, uh, the download is 4.2 gig, 4.3 gig, the big download. But being KD again, I did, well, it's not my favourite, but I did like using it. It was all right. But yeah, super stable, everything you can think for. Yeah, everything. I can't knock it. But that's why it's number seven. Yeah, number seven only. Number six, Zubuntu. Okay, this is Zubuntu 17.10. Now, I used to use this as my main driver, okay, for years and years and years, and then things went wrong. Just things went wrong when I tried to update, and the drivers just didn't want to work. And it had to come to 17.10 before they started working. So when it comes to April next year, I don't know whether I could keep my current operating system or go back to Zubuntu, because I really like it, because it does everything I need it to do. Clean, simple, loads of stuff. You know, it doesn't break very often. Well, actually, it doesn't break at all, really. Except for them bleeding drivers for the video. I don't know. But unfortunately, it's only at number six this year. Otherwise, it would have been a lot higher up. Okay. Okay, number five. You're getting ready for it. You're getting ready for it. Oh, I bet you are. I bet you are. I bet you are. Yeah. And you're saying, number five. Manjaro. Yeah. Easy Arches, I used to call it. But there's a lot of Easy Arches around nowadays. But Manjaro is one of the ones that doesn't tend to break too much. When I first started using Manjaro, it'd run for a while and something would break the system. But nowadays, it's really easy and stable. And that's why I really like it, and that's why it's number five. There's several flavours of it you can get, so you don't have to have KDE, you don't have to have XCE, you can have whatever you want to. There's even some community ones as well, using different desktops. So if you want to give them a try, go and do it because it's nice and stable nowadays, although it may break, because it's Arch. Yeah. Got to get that with Arch in your in day. Okay, next, at number four. My current operating system of choice, and has been for quite a few months now, since the summer, is Linux Lite. Yeah. I never thought I would use this as a daily driver, but I'll be really honest with you, it does everything so really well. Yes, there is some little niggles and buggles that get on my nerves now i've been using it for so long that don't work correctly 
in general, for the average user, you could just put this on and leave them. Yeah, and just just make sure they do the updates or set an auto update for them, and it'll be super fine. They wouldn't have a problem with this. It would just keep running and running and running. Remember, number four is out next year, so that would be enough to see. Okay, we're in the top three now, guys. Getting to the top three. Ready? Number three. Puppy Linux 7.5. Now the reason it's here is because it's so small, so light, fast is not the word, and anybody could use it. Let's be honest, you don't have to be an intermediate user. If you're any, uh, a new to Linux, you could actually install this with a bit of fault. But it comes with so much stuff, it's so fast, it's light on your RAM usage, and everything you can possibly think of. Remember it's 32 and 64, so a lot of distros have gone to 64 only here. But Puppy's still got a 32-bit version, if you want to run a machine that old. But let's be honest, most machines now will be 64-bit compatible, even single-core ones. But yeah, but if you've got an older one, don't worry about it. But everything comes with it. It can, do, it can run Steam games. It can do anything you really want it to. I would have put it higher, but it had two big competitors this year. Two really big ones that come late in the year, okay? Otherwise, it probably would have been number one. So, number two, and this was a really hard choice, okay? It's Solar, so Mikey and the boys and girls and guys and whoever. This has come into a distro of its own. I mean, it's so smooth, fast, reasonably fast on older machines. And it just looks very, very professional. And there's not much you can't get with it. He's worked hard to get Steam to work on it correctly. And all kudos to him. I mean, I can't knock him. I mean, I like using it. I really do. And there's a couple of several desktops you can use for it. I mean, oh, I really like it. But unfortunately, there was a new boy coming on the block for Solus, okay? So he would have been number one. So it would have been Solus and Puppy as my own two. Then, not too long ago, a week or two ago, another one popped up, okay? Another one popped up. And you're just about to see who he is. Guess what it is? I bet you can't guess, actually. Yeah. So it's number two. Number one is MX17. Now, although I do not like the bar on the left, because it's... I don't know what they've done. Everything works so fast and correctly, lightly. When you install your NVIDIA graphics drivers and install programs, uh, so, so if you install OBS, for instance, it comes with NVENC by default. Everything's all by default. So that doesn't really mean too much for me. But if you're an older graphics card or an older system, everything is there for you to use. Everything is so optimised to make your system so fast and easy to use. It is unbelievable. And that is why I've put MX-17 at the top of the list for this year and I don't think any of you was expecting that was you really but I've been following it for years and years in its all different forms MX, NTX, etc etc I've used them all but this one I would say just go and use it you'll have a really really good time so anyway that's the top film for this year sneaky and exam see you later bye bye, bye.